God's people are called into worship with the words from Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of the Lord. Shout for joy to the Lord. All the earth burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp and with the harp and the sound of singing, with trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord, the King. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the online service of the Fourth Avenue Baptist Church. If you are worshiping with us for the first time, we are so pleased and feel incredibly blessed that you made us your choice, and we pray that you are blessed and encouraged by our time together. I want to thank everyone um, who took time out of their Saturday to participate in the church quarterly meeting via Zoom. We are grateful for the technology that permits us connecting even in this small way. I was certainly blessed by seeing faces that I haven't seen in a while. It was just good to see you and to see your smiles even for a moment. And now this coming uh, Saturday would have normally been the Great Glebe Garage Sale. Um, and it's been canceled now for the second year, um, which is a very sad state of the community and our ongoing struggle uh, to contain the spread of COVID-19 in our community. It also means that persons, businesses, and charities that depended on the Great Glebe garage sale for a large portion of their annual income, um, that they will not get that through this sale. And so just want um, you to be mindful of those persons and um, to pray for them and to consider that Small businesses, I, I, listen, I don't have anything against Amazon and Walmart and any of the big ones. They're in business and they do what they do and I could say something about that. This is not about that. This is about that the small businesses in our communities are being crushed by the effects of these lockdowns. And so I'm asking you to pray about and consider where and how you could use your dollars, because $100 to a small business could make the difference in them staying open this week. It will not affect Walmart. They will be fine. It will not affect Amazon. They will be fine, okay? That's all I'm saying. So when things open up, think of the businesses in the Glebe around the church. Think of the businesses in your communities and pray and consider what small amount that you could Buy the same things you're going to buy, but just buy them from a small uh, company that could be on the brink of closing. Um, and consider those charities that um, you haven't thought of in a while um, uh, that you could also bless. Just, just pray about it and think about it. Everyone has something different that they can do. And as you're considering your gifts, both uh, in the way of commerce and in the way of giving, Hear Hebrews 13, 16. Do good and share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Let us pray. God of mercy, 
we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for Jesus is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as people towards the fullness of eternal life with you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be there your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. To the great three-in-one, eternal praises be. Hence forevermore thy sovereign majesty. May we in glory see and to eternity love and adore. Gracious God, we, your hand-selected children, have come before you this morning, believing Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are together once again. We are grateful the throne of God is occupied and sinners have an opportunity to make petitions to you there. We recognize nothing we have done or will do has made the space available, but it is because you suffered, so we say thank you. Thank you for sending Jesus Christ to walk the streets of Galilee, teaching and preaching the message of kingdom come, healing the sick and raising the dead, Thank you for Jesus' death on the cross and the suffering that gave us release and salvation. Thank you for appearing to many in bodily form so we might have witnesses to your resurrection. And thank you for going away in our sight so we might have you to look for all things. On this day, we bring before you persons within our community who are sick and or recovering, and ask a measure of your healing power upon them. Forgive their sins and make them whole. Please, God, surround each with supportive family and friends and a medical team that acts beyond its education, experience, or skills to a level only made possible through you. We remember those who walk through the valley of the shadow of death and pray each will sense your presence and feel your power and love, especially Scott, Gary, and Laura. We think of the mourning in families in Palestine and Israel and pray for the end of what seems like an endless struggle for power, land, and sovereignty. Dear Lord, from our comfortable seats here in Ottawa, we cannot imagine or begin to imagine these shadows. Yet we believe our prayers make a difference, joined with prayers of Canadian Baptists on this National Day of Prayer. We pray for the physical, spiritual, and mental health of those impacted by COVID-19. For those directly impacted, may God grant healing, comfort, and peace. For healthcare professionals, may God grant perseverance and rest. For essential workers, may God give protection as they serve on the front lines. For the poor and marginalized, may God protect those who are especially vulnerable. For government leaders and policy makers, May God give wisdom and a desire to work for the good of all, both at home and worldwide. For our churches, may God use us to provide support and hope as we care for the most vulnerable in our own communities and around the world. Help us, O oh Lord. We pray all this in the strong name of the risen and ascended Christ. Amen. 
join now in our hymn. It's number 232. Oh, right. On the day we see him rise. It's not, uh, it's not a really familiar hymn, but it's kind of a hymn for after the ascension. Hail the day that sees him rise, alleluia, to his throne above the skies, alleluia. Christ the lamb for sinners given, alleluia, enters now the highest heaven, alleluia. Our text for today is 1 John chapter 5, verses 9 through 13. And really, this, uh, this could be the entire fifth chapter of John because it actually uh, goes together. That's John chapter, 1 John chapter 5, and I'm going to read only 9 through 13. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his son. Those who believe in the son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in the son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you might have eternal life. This is the word of God. May God grant a blessing to the hearing and reading and understanding of his word. As Michael LaSasher comes, joined by Sharon Adams on a piano, Pray with me on the last of our series of living in this resurrected life, life eternal.
Throughout this Easter festival season, using the epistle written to John's worshiping community, I have been exploring how to live in this resurrected state. And it might be time, um, maybe it's way past time, to say a little bit about the current time that we inhabit. You see, most would describe our current time, our current era, as the postmodern era, the era following modernity, the era following the modern era. Modernity was a highly celebrated time. And that time included incredible technological, scientific, and medical breakthroughs. It was an era that saw the creation and explosion of a nuclear bomb and the first heart transplant. Throughout the modern era, humanity applauded and relied upon data to make decisions to establish policies, to make treaties, to pass laws, we were regularly told, based on this study, or this or that is the best course of action. It sounded great, right? It was very convincing, and it made lots of sense. The problem. The problem is we later found many of the studies, the data collection systems, and the highly sophisticated analysis were financed by those who profited from the results. The tobacco industry knew smoking caused lung cancer. The sugar industry knew that they were creating a dependency on sugar which would increase diabetes, heart disease, hypertension to dangerous levels within the population. The drug companies were overinflating their prices. The meat producers who couldn't sell a part of the animal that had a cancer spot (laughs) had nothing Thing preventing them from selling any of the other parts of the animal that didn't have a cancer lesion on it. So these revelations, and, and oh my goodness, we could have just a list of all the things we discovered that were studied that probably, uh, they're mucky. So they've created a reasonable doubt in big business, in government, and in data in general. It it is no longer a selling point to say, this is what we know. (laughs) Now, if you want to sell something, you declare, this is what we believe. Yes, belief is now the order of the day. What I believe has greater weight and authority than scientific information or study. Now, as people of faith and belief, we can applaud this turn of events. After all, belief is the cornerstone of Christian life. As followers of Jesus Christ, we believe in God's appointed time, Mary became pregnant by the Holy Spirit and gave birth to Jesus. Jesus grew in stature and grace, was baptized by water by God's servant John and then by God's Holy Spirit, traveled the streets of Galilee teaching and preaching the love of God is salvation and life. Then this egalitarian preaching and teaching made Jesus a ton of enemies and those enemies arranged for Jesus to be tried by a Roman court and sentenced to the maximum uh, punishment state sanctioned execution and gruesome death. 
We believe Jesus died and was hastily buried and on the third day was raised by the power of God over death and from death. We also believe Jesus is the Christ and has ascended to the right hand of our creator and there makes intercession for us all. This is the belief that makes all the difference. But sadly, there are those and there were those who disagreed. You see, it seems, and you have to read the entire 1 John letter to get and pick up all of these points, that there was a dissenting group. A, and this dissenting group is within the church, right? As most of the situations in the epistles, they're an internal conversation. This group within the church, this dissenting group, denied the human Jesus was, in fact, the Christ. In other words, these followers of the way denied Jesus had come in the flesh. They attested to a higher knowledge of the spirit, which would later be formally called Gnosticism. And I'm going to tell you very clearly, if we didn't understand it before, we understand now. And because of the intense debates of 2020 and 2021, little can change the mind of someone who attests to higher spiritual knowledge. So, far from attempting to dissuade anyone who believes otherwise, I join the author of this great epistle in speaking to encourage and strengthen our faith in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Belief in Jesus Christ is life, life eternal. And our, our belief, our belief centers on witness, witness. God's witness testimony and our own testimony. David Schaeffler breaks down God's testimony into three parts. Relationship to history, discerning the difference between authentic and counterfeit spirit and allowing the awareness of divine love to engage us, uh, resulting in less difficulty. Now, you know, that's that's fine, and I don't disagree with the scholar on this point. It's just as a, as a Baptist preacher and as one who comes out of the tradition of the black church, I hear instead God's testimony in the way of hymns, in the way of hymns and, and, and the way in which the church uh, uh, would have expressed it. And so, you know, I, 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 the first one that comes to mind is, down through the years, God's been good to me. Come on, sing with me. Down through the years, God's been good to me. Down through the years, God's been good to me. Don't you know God's really been good, good to me. Hmm. And, and then I, I think of, you know, being here in Canada, I've been blessed with so many Jamaican friends and Pentecostal siblings, and I think of them, and I don't know this one, but I love it. It goes, Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. Moving here, moving there, moving, moving everywhere. Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. I can hear that would break up the church, right? You would just, they, they could just get to singing that, and I can see the sisters lifting up their skirts and tapping their legs. I can see the hands waving. I know it would break up the church, right? God's testimony. And, and then, of course, there's some of us who are going to go to the old hymns. The old hymn of the church. If you trust and never doubt, God will sure 
surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Take if you trust and never doubt. God will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it there. Take, I thought I could do this. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, God will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. You see, saints, this, this is what we do. We, we rehearse God's testimony. Whether we rehearse God's testimony academically, whether we rehearse God's testimony emotionally, whether we sing and cry out to the Lord, we know what God has done. We know what God is doing, and therefore we believe what God is able to do. And you see, God's testimony culminates in the testimony of Jesus Christ. Jesus testified in word and deed. And, and that testimony affected and infected an entire community. And we are that community we are the community infected and affected, forged in the body, in the blood, and the water of God. And if you pay attention, the writer, the writer, um, go, you know, it's one of those times where I just wish everyone could just be anointed and be able to read this in Greek, right? Because then we would see how many times the writer is saying the same thing, only trying to, you know, uh, uh, grow it up a bit. Uh, uh, the writer uses the word life, which is zoe, um, and also uses the words eternal life, which is zoe aninki um, nias, almost interchangeably because they're virtual synonyms. Right? And so when one is said, the other is meant. And when the other is said, the first is meant because life is eternal life as far as the writer is concerned. Uh, it's, it's what this community believes. This community, our community, believes that we have passed from death to life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus Christ is eternal life. Now, now, let, now, let me be clear. Let me be clear. Our testimony is valid and God's testimony is greater. We, but we don't want to neglect our testimony because the world desperately needs to see and hear the promise of life given eternally through God in Jesus Christ. Our human testimony, uh, the human testimony of a believing community moves beyond words and appears in concrete acts of compassion. Our proof is our love of one another. Now, I appreciate the way Elizabeth Johnson has to say this. She says it so well. Far from being an escape from this world, eternal life is a call to authentic human experience in the world, a call to embody the love of God made known to us in the word made flesh. Isn't that lovely? See, according to to uh, uh, verse 11 and that second part of that verse, eternal life is a future hope and something experienced in the present. Eternal life has already been given to us by God. 
<laughs> That's good news. We can stop right there, sing some of those songs, march around the church, march around our living room, and we would be good. That's good news. Eternal life right now? And when we, and it doesn't matter how we choose to define our life. We can define our life in qualitative ways like uh, the homes we live in that we did not build or the food that, that's on our table that we did not grow or we can uh, define it quantitatively by the numbers of days that we live or the number of people that we witness to and as a result of our witness uh, coming to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, but however you define life, we have life. Life and life eternal right now, this very minute, this very second. We have the joy and fellowship of a daily walk with God. Do not miss this. Do not permit misinformation, mistrust, and skepticism that is so prevalent in this current age to drive a wedge between you and the living Savior. Do not allow a search for knowledge or be so determined to be right. Don't let it rob you of the joy of your salvation or your sweet fellowship with God. You are a child of God. You are, uh, abide in Christ and Christ abides in you. You are a disciple, a follower, a student of Christ. You have life, life eternal. You. And this week, as we roll towards Pentecost, the celebration of Holy Spirit coming and abiding with us, if, if right now you're not feeling everything I just said, then this week spend some time asking the Holy Spirit to come to come again afresh into your life. It's been 14, now almost 15 months, saints, and we are not doing all right. We're weak, we're tired, and so it's okay to say, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit. And then if we, if we pray enough, maybe God will bless us with an anointing of the Holy Spirit like the day of Pentecost. It's possible. God is able to do it. And as I was working on this week's sermon, um, a dear saint um, uh, Winsome uh, uh, gave me a, a song, and I, it's, it's a lovely song. It's not one I ever heard before, but it turns out my, our musician knows the song. Uh, uh, but I'm, and maybe you know it too. And we're going to close this time with this song as not only a benediction, uh, but a blessing. It goes like this, come Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, Holy Spirit, I pray. Come in your strength and your power. Come in your own gentle way. Let's, let's close out using this song as a prayer. Speak. 